Looking forward to a wonderful day of worship. Pray that you've come to see what God's doing in your life today. We're on page 366. I will sing the wondrous story. If you know the story of Jesus Christ, your Savior, I pray you'll sing out. Lift your voice and honor and glorify His name today. Enjoy your day. You're in the Lord's house. Put the world outside and just spend some time with God. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the cross. Sunday school class this morning. When you count the goodness of God, take time to make you a list of God's blessings in your life and the things that you ought to be thankful for. Discover class will be this afternoon right after the morning service. Also on Wednesday night at 545, uh, there will be the key truths for women. Uh, I think they're in the what, third week or fourth week now, and so uh, they've got a six-week study going on there. There's a youth night on uh, Friday night. Uh, six to eight, our missionary of the week is uh, uh, Matthew Barnes, our missionary of the State House. <laughs> in our life and what God wants to happen in our life 
And if we know this and we understand that purpose, it helps us to understand God's will in our life. So if you turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, uh, God's been, I don't know, for a while, uh, I don't know, probably for like the last several weeks, uh, He's been laying on my heart about Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and I, I've not, I haven't preached, I've, I've referenced it several times, but not preached out Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And it's a, it's a, a pretty famous ver, a chapter about a time for this and a time for that and a time for this and a time for that. And so I, 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 I was, as I was reading that and going through it and, and uh, they're praying about it, well, God's going to lay my heart about this, and I'm hoping this might help me a little bit here. And so we're going to look at verses 1 through 8 starting off. It says this, To everything there is a season and a time, to every purpose under heaven, a time to be a time to born and a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rent, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time to time of war, and a time of peace. Let's have a word of prayer we get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you'll bless the message and time to spend in the Word. Help us, Heavenly Father, with it. I pray, Lord, your guidance. I pray for souls to be saved. I pray that there's one here that's known Christ as your Savior. I pray they'll realize that it is a time right now to be saved. I pray for us Christians. Help us, Lord, to know more about your timing and your purpose. And, and Lord, help us to guide in, uh, in our relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. A life is all about time and seasons. It's all about that. God works and operates by time and seasons. He works in our life and everything has a everything has a purpose. There's nothing that goes on in our life that there's not a purpose to it. Everything has a purpose. Uh, sadly, I think when people do not know this truth, it's sad that we don't know what God is truth of what God is. And it's sad that we ignore uh, this truth about God and everything's a time and a season and it, it is sad that we refuse to acknowledge God's timing we just think well this is just happenstance it just kind of randomly happened it doesn't randomly happen it, nothing randomly happens without God knowing about it and have a purpose for it and you sometimes you say well, well, well why does this happen why does that happen I think a lot of times is it because you're asking the wrong question and you're probably asking the wrong person, why? Maybe we need to ask God, why? Why is this happening? Why is this timing going on? You might get a better answer that way too. And you know, I, I, you know it's sad to hear people say, they, you know, uh, about wasting time. I wasted so much time. I, I wasted my seasons of my life. Um, you know, many times it's the reason why we feel we waste this time is because we refuse God and God's will. And that's why we feel that we waste times and seasons in our life because we refuse God. We refuse God's will in our life and His direction. And because of that, yeah, we feel like we've wasted things and regret things because we've been out of His will. And we shouldn't be that way, but sometimes we do that. You know, God doesn't force His will on you. He doesn't force you to be saved. He wants you to choose with your will to be saved. But also the same token is that He does not force you to follow His will in His time and in His seasons either. He wants you to willingly choose to do that in your life. He doesn't force you. His perfect will is that you would know Him as your Savior. Have a relationship with God. That's His will. Individually, he wants you to develop a relationship. He individually, he wants you to understand God's timing and seasons in your life to understand what he wants you to do. It's a, and the first thing I was talking about is seasons and time. Season and time. When you grow to understand God's, where, uh, God's will, when you start understanding God's word and what it is and his authority, 
and understand that He is sovereign over everything that goes on in your life. You understand that ultimately that He has dominion over this world, over mankind, He has dominion over it. When you start understanding, you'll start understanding and beginning to understand how God operates and His purpose and His will because you understand who is in control. And I, and, and, um, and we always think that the world is spiraling out of control. It is not. Now, God will allow man to continue in this evil world and in corruption. And the only reason He's allowing man to continue on is so that someone will get saved. And so they don't have to go to hell. That's why he's allowing it. There's no other reason why he's allowing the chaos in the world. He's only allowing it so one man can get saved and born again and go to heaven. That's why he's allowing it. Because if he, if he wanted to say, well, I'm not going to allow it, that means he cuts it off right now. And says, I'm coming back. I'm setting it right. And then anybody here on after that, they're on their way to hell. But in his sovereign love and grace, there is time and there is a season for everything under the sun. The reason why is that people can know that He is God and who He is. Yes. I thought about this about seasons and time. Because you look, you see in verse 1, it says, To everything there is a season and a time. And I thought, okay, well, what is this about season and time? So, I, you know, I'm thinking about a season is a period of time. Like we got summer is a period of time, like three months. or It's a season, it's a period of time. So you think about seasons in your life. A few days, a month, maybe years is a season that I'm going through. I've got maybe uh, 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 health issues or drama in the family. And now I'm going through a season of things going on in life. Um, and that could be a season that's happening. A time is a little bit shorter event or time frame. Could be a few days or a month. So if you think about this in life, Am I going through a season or am I going through a time in my life? And then we ask God, in the season that I am going through right now, what can I learn and how can I glorify you through this season that I'm going through? And how can you guide me in your perfect will, maybe through this time I'm going through or this season in my life that I'm going through? Everything has a purpose. Everything has a purpose. Good or bad, it has a purpose. And you say, well, I chose something bad. Understand, there's a purpose in that new choice that you have. God still can work through our bad decisions. And some of the things that we did, they were like, well, that was a really foolish thing to do. But God can still work through it and still use it for His glory if we turn to him and says, God, I, I, made a, I made a decision now that put me in a season or a time in my life right now. All right, God. I, I, and I know that everything has a purpose. And God says, yes, it does. And based on that, God's going to show you a purpose out of that. And help guide you out of that so he gets glory and then you have a better relationship with God. And so, and, and you know, think about this. And sometimes, well, what the... And I think about a lot of things that God does. And then some of the things that I do. And then I say, well, I wish God would not allow me to do that. I wish that sometimes too. But in His perfect sovereign will, He wants you to do it for the right reason. Because if you force you, you'll begin to hate the person that forced you to do it. You make the choice because I love God and this is the right thing to do in the eyes of God and I'm going to do it. And because of that, that's going to be a time that God's going to bless in that time. But then if I decide that, I well, I don't care what God thinks, I'm going to do my own thing. God's going to deal with us in that area of season of time and He's going to have a purpose in that direction. Even though it's going away from God, He's going to bring a purpose into that. You know, and, I, and it's like, okay, what is it? I have no idea. I mean, tell me what you're in. I'll tell you what maybe there might be a purpose what you're in. I don't know. It's between you and God to ask that question. It's between you and God to figure this out. It's a relationship. It's a time that we need to figure this out that what God has. Things don't happen randomly. 
And when man thinks that things happen randomly, is it because they do not understand God? They have no clue that God's sovereign will and who is in control when they say, well, this was randomly happened. And you don't know who God is. Nothing randomly happens. There's a purpose behind all these things. And you say, well, yeah, but wait a minute, I did wrong, and, and all of a sudden now i got to pay for it. Understand there's a purpose. And then sometimes God's purpose is going to set you down. And maybe put you on your backside so you can start looking up at Him. You know? There's a purpose for a lot of things that God allows to happen and what God's going to do. God wants a relationship with you, and He will do whatever it takes to have a relationship with you. And He will work sometimes through our bad decisions that He has. God has a, a purpose and a, and a way that he wants to bring something in his plan that he has for your life. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And he will do whatever it takes to bring that plan and that purpose in your life until the day you take your last breath. If he gets one day out of you to do his plan and purpose, that's all worth it. But I, 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 I just hope you don't go down that road because it's going to be a, a long, hard road of... A school of hard knocks if you're going to go down that road. It's easy right now to submit and do God's will right now and his purpose. Just don't go through the school of hard knocks and get all those knots on your head because I'm, wait, I'm, I'm just going to do my own thing. God's going to work through it, but it's going to be a struggle for you. And it's not the way God wants it to be. He wants us to have that time that we have. You know, I, and, I, and I think is that one of the things that what God wants to do is that, okay, if I made a bad decision... How is God going to work through that? Well, God's going to work through that. One, he's going to build your relationship to be better. That's one way thing he's going to work through it. The other thing through your bad decision is that he's going to get glory through it. When you come out of that bad decision and you know God brought you out of it, you're going to glorify God and say God is great, God is good, God did it, and not me, but God brought me through it. And you can testify to the point that some soul can be saved and born again out of it. That's all God wants to do in this area. I, I noticed something here. If you notice something in this chapter 1 through 8, it's, it, it deals a lot with a lot of opposites. It deals like an end and a beginning. It deals with all this area. And I think about the first thing that he talks about that I am in 2, it says, I am born and a time to die. Now, it gives you like it gives you here after that it breaks there with a with a, 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 a semicolon that he has here, and he says in this that now everything in between, I was I born I'm going to die now everything in between has a time of what goes on and what happens, a time to plant, a time to pluck up, meaning a time to plant it, then one time I'm going to harvest it. There's a purpose of everything that goes on in between that I am born and I die. There's a purpose in everything that I have and what goes on. And, and, I, and I say this because God wants to understand there's moments to moment things are going to happen. And, and God is there each time, the moment to moment that things to happen. And, and we need to understand that God, I, I, I think it's a, a question I think, I have in this, and when I think about this, is that born to die and everything happens in between, in between. And I, and I thought about this. Okay, what about this question about what goes on between? And I, and, I, and, I, and I found something in verse 9. If all this goes on in between, and life goes on between, okay, so what's the big question of it? The big question is verse 9. It says, What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he labor. So if I plant and I harvest, I pluck up, I kill, I heal, I break down, I build up, I weep, I time of laugh, a time of mourn, a time to dance, a kind of time to cast away stones, a time to gather up. Okay, so what's the profit? What profits you in the labor of your life in between all these things? What is your profit? What does it earn? What does he, what you gain out of it? What, what was the what 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 happened? What helped your life? What what you get out of it? That you that it happens. And so as 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 Ecclesiastes written by Song of Solomon, and um, 
as Song of Solomon was the wisest man in the world, but he realized he was the dumbest man in the world too. Because when you read Ecclesiastes, he basically said, I didn't know nothing. I thought I was the wise man, but I had not a clue. But he wouldn't realize that all the things that go on in my life, he brought it down to was what was the profit in my, all my labor? What did it earn me? What did I gain out of it? What did it, what, what did it, and I'll ultimately say now, is what did it profit God? And if you look at the life of Solomon, he started out great, but he petered out. When you look in life, what profits you when you do this? What was the profit of planting and gathering? What was the profit in that? What was the profit in you mourning and laughing? What was the profit in that for you? What did you gain out of it? What, what did it enhance your life? When you think about this, what did it profit you in your relationship with God in all these things that go on in your life? What was the profit in your relationship with God? You know, I want you to hold your place here in Ecclesiastes because we're going to bounce back and forth in Ecclesiastes, back and forth uh, in, in this discussion here. But I want you to turn with me to Romans chapter 8. And the Bible talks about there's a purpose for everything that goes on in our life. There's a, there's a purpose that this happens, this happens. And, and this is a pretty good, uh, I'd say, a, a good description of why all these things that go on in our life. Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Uh, a time to rend and a, a time to heal and, and all the time to sow and, and, and all these things, a time to war and a time, all these things. Why? Well, if you look with me here in verse 28, he says this, And we know that all things work together for good to them that, what is that? Love God. Love God. Okay? To them who are called to according to His purpose. To whom he did foreknow, he did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestine, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. See, the purpose of all the things that go on in our life and the purpose of God's will of this happened, I'm born and I'm going to die. What was the purpose in between it? What it tells us, all these things that we have in verse 28 work together, but it's for God's good to you that know God. When you start knowing God, then you start knowing God's purpose and you, know, you start knowing the good of what God wants in your life and the good that God wants towards your life and with the good that God wants to do in your life. That's what we start knowing. And, and, and he says, all that we have are called, all that are saved and born again are called according to His purpose. When we're saved and born again, God puts a purpose on your life. And what we need to do is say, God, what is it? And we search the scriptures and we ask God constantly, Lord, what is your purpose for my life? And as more we seek Him in trying to understand His purpose, the more He's going to reveal His purpose and His glory to you in this. It's almost, it basically comes down to how much do you want it. The more you want it, the more He's going to reveal to you. The more He's going to tell you about this. Because 29 and 30 basically says the same thing. The word predestined means is that he has a purpose. Not that he, for, but he's foreknowing this and is predestined. What he's saying is that he wants you to be conformed to his image. So when he says, that my, my thought is, is this. When someone gets saved and born again, this is what I want him to do. I want him to be Christ-like. That's what that's saying. So the first purpose that we need to understand that God wants us to do is that we need to be Christ-like. We need to behave what, like the sons of God, like He wants us to behave. Because in the end of verse 30, He says, Whom He justified, them also, them He also glorified. So what God wants us to do 
is to be Christ-like so He can bring His glory through your life. And He will do all He can to make that happen. All He can to make that happen. Even in the good or the bad decisions, He's still going to do what He can to make that happen, to bring glory through you for His name. That means He predestined or foreknown. That's what He wants done in your life. And so we got to decide, what am I going to do? You have to make that decision of what you're going to do. God is not going to strong arm you. He's not going to force you because He wants you to do it willingly. He said, God, help me to do that. And the part of our prayer time that we have in life is to seek out God's will for my life. Each season and time in your life, sometimes that will will stay the same on purpose. Or in another season in life, that purpose that you had before might change. And says, so now in this season of your life, I have a new purpose for you to do. If, if we're in tune trying to find out what God wants, He will reveal each season or time in our life, this is the purpose I want for your life to do. But we have to be in constant relationship to Him to find us out for Him to deal with us. But if we're not in a constant relationship with Him and seeking through His Bible and in prayer, you're gonna, not going to know the right timing or the right season that you're in. You're not going to know it. And then when you're in that season and that time of your life, you're going to feel out of sorts. Why am I in sorrow? Why am I laughing? Well, why is this and why this? And I'm going to ask God, I'm going to ask all these why questions, and you're not going to get an answer for it. Because you're not seeking. You're not trying to find out. In, you know, Ephesians uh, 5.16 says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. The word redeem means to be, is to, uh, is to uh, be very, you would say, careful about that time that you have in your life. I'm redeeming that time. I, I want to, that time is precious that I have, and I'm redeeming that time to make sure I have better use of that day that I, each day I have because the days are evil. Meaning that, 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 that things are going to get worse and worse, but I need to take care of the day I have right now and redeem that time and buy that time back because it's precious of what I'm going to use it for. We need to redeem that time. Colossians 4, 5 says this, walk in wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time. Meaning, I need to make sure that I'm taking proper use of the time that I have right now, the time and the season that I have, because the people who are without, whether are they without? They're without Jesus Christ. And I need to make sure that I am doing what I am supposed to do during the time and the season and the purpose that God has me during that time because there might be someone that I can help them to know Jesus Christ, to help them to know who Christ is and, and, and maybe help them in their walk with Christ so I can help them to maybe understand God's will for their life and help them during those times and seasons so that they can get out of it and move on from glorifying God. You know, the question is what is your life? What is your life? Each one of us has something different in our life to offer God. Each things in our life are different than you have a purpose, I have a purpose, I have a will, God has a will. What is that in my life? What is it in your life? You need to ask God that question. You have to ask God that question. What is it in my life? And you say, God, reveal it to me. And I guarantee God's going to reveal it to you. Now the question is, will you be obedient to what he reveals to you? That's the other question. And you say, God's going to reveal it to you, but he's not going to strong arm you into saying, you better do this or I'm going to hit you. That's not him. Okay? Now, there might be a few times I might say, it'd be good to hit him. <laughs> you know? It might be, you know, but that's not, you know, sometimes you got to get that, that jog that, that brain a little bit. Get that thing worked out a little bit. Oh, okay, get those cobwebs out. But God, all he wants to do is that you turn to him and say, Lord, I love you, and whatever you ask me to do, I will do. That's all he asks. That's all he wants from him. He don't want anything more than that. And time is all, is all we have. Time is all we have. And, you know, and, and, and God controls the time and what we do and what we labor and all the things that we do in this life. 
And God's first purpose is that He has that He wants everyone to be eternally saved and born again. That is God's first purpose. He wants everybody to know that they're on their way to heaven according to what this book has revealed to them of their need of salvation in Jesus Christ and through the blood. And that one time in our life, I have been saved, I am born again, and at that moment, I have the indwelling Holy Spirit, and my name's in the book of life. I know that without a shadow of a doubt. That's God's first purpose. God's second purpose that He has with the time that we live is to grow closer to Him. That's always desire for us anyways. Is first, He makes a relationship with you through His Son, Jesus Christ. The second thing He wants is you to grow closer to Him. How is your relationship with God? Is it close? You're the only one that can answer that. You're the only one that can answer that I have a close relationship with God or I'm working on a close relationship with God. You are the only one that can answer that. You know if you're working with that. You know that you're spending your time in prayer and Bible reading and, and following the steps of Christ. You know that. And God does all God desires to have. That's all He desires to have. You know, the Bible tells us, so then every one of us shall give an account of Himself to God. It's a personal thing. It's a personal thing. I, I, and God's going to ask you, did you follow my will? Which He's already going to know that. When you stand up there and says, okay, you didn't follow my will. I had, I had a purpose at this season in your life, but you refused it. I, you know, I don't, I, don't want, I don't want to be said that. I, I have to find out, God, what is your purpose? What do you want me to do? i got to follow it because I, one day I'm going to have to say, well, this time in your life, I wanted you to do this, and you said no to me. Those are the things that he's going to be telling you. And when I think about that, it's heartbreaking. And, you know, I'm going to stand there in the, in, the, in the congregation of the righteous and I'm going to hang my head going, I'm sorry, Lord. And that's all I can say. But he says, you're going to, you missed out. Blessings. And miss out of, of what God wanted to teach you at that time and reveal to you at that time. You're going to miss out some of the great things that God wanted to do with your life. You're going to miss out on all those things. And God said, all I did is ask you to do it. When you start walking with God, you start and get a close relationship, He will bring that to pass and show these things to you. Everyone will give an account. The lost will give an account one day. One day they're going to stand up by the floor of the great white throne judgment and says, Hey, the reason I'm not going to let you into heaven is because, well, one, you broke every commandment in the Bible, and two, your name's not written in the book of life. And for that reason, I am not allowing you into heaven. I'm going to put you in a lake of fire with wailing and gnashing of teeth where the wormwood would not die and where you're going to burn for all eternity in pain. So you've got to decide, how's my account with God? How is my account? Am I saved or am I not saved? And if I am saved, how is my walk with God? You know, Proverbs 22 uh, 2 says this, The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. It's not about what we gain. It's not about your material the things that you have. It's not about how much you got in your bank account. It's all about your relationship with God. Where is it? Because all of us are going to stand and meet with our maker one day. And he's not going to say, man, I'm so glad you got a million dollars in your bank. Wow! Now you did really well! I don't think he's going to say that to you. <laughs> okay? <laughs> no. And so we got to decide in this area, what is my relationship with him? How is it? The second thing I wanted to talk here about, and we'll move on in this part here, is mankind thinks that they are wiser than God. Now, if you turn back with me, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, I hope you're in place there, because I wanted to see, some, as I was reading this chapter and going through this study and asking God to reveal something to me about this in this chapter here, and, and, and God brought something out of here, and I thought this was really good. I hope you thought it was as good as I thought it was, but I don't know, maybe it just got for me, but I thought it was really good. So, in verse 9, let's start 9 here, it says this. Uh, he says, What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work of God maketh from the beginning to the end. 
I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. I also that everyone should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is a gift of God. I know that whatsoever good, uh, uh, whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it, and God, and God doeth it, that men should fear before him. That which uh, have been is now, and that which is to be uh, have already been, and God required that which is past. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. That wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. We are not here to judge the wicked. Okay? He already told us that He's got a time, that He's going to judge them. Now, I might not like what they're doing but I'm not going to condemn them I'm going to pray for the wicked that need Jesus Christ yeah. okay that's what is that's what he's saying right. it is up to him to judge whether they're going to go to heaven or not he already knows that he will already decide that that is his purpose not of mine mm -hmm. and if this person needs Jesus Christ I will give them Jesus Christ I'm not going to judge where he's at where they're sitting at what their life is like and what did it happen but they need Jesus Christ mm -hmm. They need to be saved. They need to be born again. They do need to know 100% they're on their way to heaven. That's what, that's what we need to do. But he also said he's going to judge the righteous too. So none of us are going to escape. And, oh, I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm, a, I'm under grace. Everything's free. I can go do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No way. You have to, if you want to know any more about that part about your righteous life, I would suggest you read Hebrews chapter 12, which talks about the chastening of God. To the children of God. And that chastising of God says, I'll chastise you, but it is to bring peaceable fruit. Amen. Means I'm going to take a lot of that bad stuff out of your life to bring peace in your life. Well, I like that bad stuff. And God probably look at you and says, How is that peace you have in your life? I like that bad stuff. How's that peace? And ain't there. Yeah. It's because you're not allowing God to bring that peaceful root right. fruit out of your life. Right. Get that bad junk out, bring that good stuff in. But I, I, I want you to turn with me to Proverbs 16. We're gonna come back to Ecclesiastes real quickly, but I, I kinda of wanna hit something here in Proverbs. Pastor brought Proverbs up, chapter uh, Proverbs. I read Proverbs every day, One and, I just, and there's so much wisdom in Proverbs, and I, I suggest it, if you have a chance, Every day, read a proverb. I'll tell you what, it, every day, uh, Proverbs steps on my toes. I read Proverbs, and man, I said, oh, that hurts. Because <laughs> there's something about Proverbs. It talks about anger. It talks about bitterness. It talks about wrath. It, 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 it talks about how my relationship with my wife, my kids. And it, it talks about all kinds of things in here, and it really hits you between the eyes, Proverbs. But I, I want you to look with me here in verses 1 through 9. He says, the preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. God will help you to make the right decisions and the right answers. He will help you. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirit. You might think it is, but God says this is what it is. And we need to find out what God says is and not what I think it is. We need to weigh it out. Because God weighs that out also on us. And we need to ask God, am I thinking right? And God will tell you whether you are not. The Lord <laughs> hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Now, a lot of people have a problem with first born. Now, God did not make you evil when you start out, but God made you anyways. You just turned out evil. Okay? But he still made you. But you've turned out evil because of the choices you made. And he says, I made them even unto the day of evil. Yes, I made both of them good and bad, righteous and not righteous. I made everything and I made our people. Now they choose to go evil, that's their choice, but I still made them. 
Now, I didn't make them to behave that way. I just made them. They decided the direction they made. That's what four really telling you about. Okay? And some people have this thing, well, God, made, God makes evil. No, he did not make evil. He made everything good. It just, man, turned it to be evil. Okay? So we got to get that in right priority because some people have that false idea on that. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination. So he kind of explains that a little bit. That we're an abomination of proud of heart. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. By fear of the Lord, man depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenue without. A man's heart deviseth his ways, but the Lord directeth his steps. Everything has a purpose. God wants to direct your steps. God wants to help you. But 7 says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he'll make it his enemies, be at peace with him. How do you please the Lord? Follow him. Obe be obedient to him. Follow his commandments. Follow his word. Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's how you're going to please him. Turning your back and saying, I'm going to do my own thing, does not please God. This is like when a child says, they take something, he's just say, oh, I, I grab mom's face and I'll, I'll walk by and think. You're like, why'd you do that? I don't know, I, I just want to do that. Well, that didn't make me happy. And we wonder why when we do our life, we say, well, I just want to do that. And we expect God to be happy. And he's going to say, I'm not happy. And if God's not happy, you ain't happy. And, and, and seven gives you a promise that if you please the Lord in any ways, your enemies will be happy with you. Why is this guy so mad at me? Hmm. Why is, man, I feel like I got all these problems at me. Maybe I'm not pleasing the Lord. Maybe all my enemies are coming at me because they're not happy with me. And God sometimes uses that as a chastening tool towards us. And so when we go back to Ecclesiastes 3, I want you to see something because the Lord says he makes everything. And, you know, he says he makes all things. And I, and I thought about something about him making all things in Proverbs 3. It, and I, and I kind of want to wrap this up right here real quick because how, how we as people think that we're smarter than God. Verse 11 says this. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their hearts so that man can find out the work that, and I'm sorry, so that no man no man. I like that. I, I kind of underlined that part. No man. That no man can find out the work of God. The work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Now, I, I, I kind of thought about this. He said that God put all this together. He made everything beautiful. He set things in man's heart. And you look at it in the Bible, it tells us that God has already written the law on our hearts even before we knew who God was. That was in Romans 1 and 2. He says he writes in our He wrote the world in our hearts already. But he says this, that no one, and he says no man can find out the work that God maketh. Now, I find these scientists are a bunch of hooies. Amen. Okay? They think they can figure out how to make life. They think they can make life from a test tube. They think that we started from a big bang and a small, uh, a small, whatever you call it, from some kind of swampy thing, that we came out here, and all these things, they think that they can figure out who God is. How can I create this? Oh, I think that, oh, I think I'm smarter than God and say, God, you made a mistake. We tell God today that God makes mistakes. Well, you didn't create me right, God. I don't like my looks. I don't like who I am, God. So I think, God, you made a mistake. And we think, oh, God, you made a mistake. I should have been a girl. <laughs> oh, God, you made a mistake. I should be a boy. You made a mistake, God. I, I know that. Man says, we know that. Oh, we know that. We're smart now because they come out of the womb and already they know who they are. I, I read an article about that. That already they know when the baby comes out. The parent says, oh, he should have been a girl. Oh, he's because he's gravitating to do things that uh, that a girl would do. He should have been a girl. 
Ah, oh, wait a minute. What is this loony bin we in? And, and God says that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. How are we thinking that we can figure this out and try to say God made a mistake? God makes no mistakes. Amen. He is perfect. His word is perfect. Amen. We can trust this word from the beginning to the end. We can trust everything from that. The only reason a man thinks that is because man is sinful. That's why man thinks that. He's unregenerated. He's lost without Jesus Christ or he's either severely backslidden that he forgot who God is. I have no idea, but you cannot tell a holy, righteous God that has created this world and everything in it, and he created it by his word and his spoken word, and then we're going to manage all of a sudden today. We're wiser than God. Wow, wow, man. 10,000 years from now since the world been created, and 10,000 years later, I'm saying, God, you made a mistake. Finally, you figured it out. You made a mistake. Man, God, you must not be perfect. Wow. And, so, and besides that, God, this world is a lot older than you think it is. God, this world is actually about a couple million years old. You have no idea, God. You forgot all about your timing. Your clock was been off, and you're, when you created it, it just, you, you were all off on your timing. No, this world is about a million, million years old. That's a bunch of hooey. Okay? That is, that is crazy thinking. But see, the reason why man thinks that is because man is simple. And they do not, when they recognize that God is sovereign, God is righteous, and God is holy, and God is in control, man has to submit to authority. And that is the biggest problem right there. Man does not want to submit to the authority of God and say that, God, you're right, I'm wrong. Mm, I'm never wrong. <laughs> and that's the problem with man today. When man realizes God's right, I'm wrong, you'll begin to understand the will of God in your life and follow it. Time and life, time and seasons. What are you doing with it? What are you doing with your labor? As he said tonight, what is your labor? What are you doing with it? Ask God, and he will tell you. Let me Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will just bless the message. Lord, I do pray for souls to be saved and people to know Christ. Lord, there's one here that doesn't know Jesus as their Savior, I pray today will be a day of salvation and that they will come forward and make that right and make that time in their life that they have made uh, a commitment to you to be saved and, and have now told you that, that, Lord, I want you in my heart. I want your blood to wash my, my sins and put my name in your book of life. But I pray for us Christians, Lord. Lord, how is our walk with you? Is it close? Is it, is it where I need to be? Am I searching out, finding out your will and your purpose for my life? Lord, help me to know that. And Lord, I pray that you will guide me in that area. I pray that we'll seek, start seeking that out. Because Lord, everything has a purpose underneath the sun, as the Bible tells us. There's a time to be born and a time to die. Lord, I pray that you'd help us know those times and seasons. And Lord, when we're in those times and seasons of our life, help us to search it out and look towards you and pray towards you to ask about what's going on. Guide us through it. So, Lord, your name will be glorified through us. I thank you, Lord, and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you find yourself a bit irritated or overwhelmed, it's a sign that you're spending less time with God and more time with this world. And that's what the truth is. If you're, if you're getting irritated by what's going on in the news and what's going on in the world, shut it off, open up the Bible, and start talking to God. That will take care of a lot of that irritation. Because we know that we realize that. Oh yeah, God's in control. Amen. He's just allowing it for souls to be saved Amen. and giving time for more people to get Amen. saved and born again and get to heaven. So I, I'm just going to let God take care of that and I'm just going to go on with my life. And you're going to be a whole lot happier. I'm Amen. really serious. If you just say, look, God take care of it, I'm just going to go on and just and not dwell on it, you're going to be a whole lot better. Really, really.